Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dive into this expanded polystyrene texture. First, just a quick look at the setup. I've basically got my object on a plane, three lights pointing at it, one to act as a backlight and two as front lights, one light pointing towards the backdrop and then the camera just pointing straight at the object. To start creating the texture, I'm switching over to the shading node. I have viewport shading enabled and I'm using the cycles render engine and my GPU to do all the thinking and processing. I've already applied a principled BSDF node uh, and plugged that into a material output. Now the first additional node we're going to need is a Voronoi texture, so press Shift A, search for the Voronoi texture, and then once you've placed that, if you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, press Control T to add a mapping and texture coordinate. If you don't have that um, feature enabled, you can just search and add these manually. Change the output from the texture coordinate to object. And then we are going to add a color ramp. Plug the distance from the Voronoi texture into that. And take the color ramp and plug that into the normal value. So we can start to see things happening here. Let me just make sure I'm shading that smooth. Next up, we're going to add a bump node to convert that data into normal data. And make sure that color ramp is plugged into height. So now we have this very odd looking thing, which is far from what we want. So the first thing we're going to do is change the scale on the Voronoi texture to 50. Now this texture will change depending on the size of your object. So keep an eye on that uh, when you come to looking at your finished render. Uh, for the black value on the color ramp, we're going to push that over to 0.55. And we'll leave the white value where it is. We're going to leave the strength at one here and drop the distance to 0.1. And we're going to invert it. So now we're almost really sort of where we need to be, but we're gonna add a couple of extra controls in here. We're going to add another color ramp. Plug the Voronoi texture into that. And then plug this directly into the specular value. And then we're going to plug this also directly into subsurface radius. And the subsurface we're going to put at 0.1. Now to control this further, we are going to add a brightness and contrast node between the color ramp and the subsurface radius. And so that you can see what's happening, I'm just gonna isolate this node. So basically what we've got coming through here is the Voronoi texture, this color ramp, and just the brightness contrast. Currently the output is ignoring the principled shader. So if I change the brightness to minus 0.5 you can see that it intensifies those dots and i'll leave the contrast contrast as it is i'll reconnect the principled shader and we can see then we, we have something better if you want this to be less process intensive ignore this step and just go with whatever your heart feels like on the principled shader but believe it or not that is it for um, this expanded polystyrene. You can increase the roughness a bit if you want just to sort of tone it down but other than that we are spot on. So I'm going to go ahead and render that. Just so you know I'm using 256 samples. I am going to enable the denoise and I'm going to use the optics here uh, and for light paths I am going to go with direct light um, and for color management I've got a medium high contrast 
So all these things make a difference to how things look um, when you render them out. So if you're not getting exactly what you're looking for, you might want to have a look at some of those things. Anyway, let's render this out and take a look. And there we go, expanded polystyrene in just a few minutes. The render itself on these settings with my processor took 23 seconds. As I say, you could drop out some of that subsurface stuff to um, increase the speed and just make sure you're optimizing your renders um, to make sure things are speedy. Anyway, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Of course, if you've got any questions, comments or suggestions for future materials, then please feel free to drop them in the comments section below the video. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you.